Well, good morning, Crossroads. It is uh, great to uh, share another week with you, another another uh, moment in Scripture. Uh, this week, if you have been following along with us, Kevin has uh, broken down for us what it looks like for a God, um, for our God, to not be a God that boasts. Um, Angie took us through a a really neat discipline of kind of writing our own uh, our own psalm about God and to God. Um, and what I really want you to catch is, in a lot of ways, when it comes to this idea that love doesn't boast, um, one of the remedies out of that type of heart and that type of thinking is to praise and worship God more often, right? Um, to acknowledge his greatness, to acknowledge his His wonder, his majesty. So I really loved the fact that Angie took us down that road. And so as I came into thinking about uh, this idea that love doesn't boast, that God doesn't boast, um, and so how could I engage you and I in a practice of boasting less, um, but living like God more, right? Not just the the not doing of an action, action, but the the positive living out of God's character. And I began to think kind of what is the opposite of boasting, right? Um, and if you think about it in one way or another, bus- boasting is about our need to have the focus on us. It's about our need to draw people's attention uh, to us and to who we are. Um, boasting in whatever form it takes is a pretty good indicator that you and I need to give our root system some attention. In other words, um, if you and I find ourselves in a place where we are consistently being a people that tries to draw attention to ourselves by boasting, again, whatever form that takes, then you and I should probably look at where our identity is actually resting. Is it resting, as Ephesians says, because we are rooted down deep into the love of Christ? Um, And when you and I reestablish our identity roots, it becomes easier to make sure that you and I are not a people that need attention drawn to ourselves. But actually, we find ourselves in a place where we are much more ready to give the attention to others. So if you find yourself fighting in your life for attention, I want to give you two steps. Number one, receive God's love. Every day, take time, set aside, take a breath. You'll read read scriptures like Ephesians. Um, I believe it's Ephesians chapter 4, you know, the love of God rooted down into... Um, Read scriptures like that and remind yourself of who you are. Receive God's love. Receive God's love as dearly loved children. Right? Be anchored back into our our identity as dearly loved children. So number one is to receive God's love. Number two, okay, and this is the word for today. I want you and I to think about encouraging others. Right? Because if you and I become a people who can receive God's, God's love, that opens you and I up more to be able to give God's love. Um, and one of the ways that we can do that is encouraging one another. And, and so I just want to uh, give you a few thoughts on that this morning. It's Hebrews chapter 10, 24 through 25. And it goes like this. And let us consider how we may spur one another on. Toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as we see the day approaching. So the first thing is that you and I, um, in the second verse, right, that you and I are to encourage one another. Um, Lee Keel used to say that, you know, encourage is is the idea, you know, the root of that word is courage. 
And so that when you and I are encouraging one another, you and I are living in such a way that we are giving courage to one another. We are helping each other as brothers and sisters in Christ have courage. Um, I've always liked that way of thinking and that analogy. Um, But I want you to understand what the context here is in this section, right? Because our encouragement has a focus. And that focus is this. Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. The context is the living out of the love and actions of the Father. That's what you and I are supposed to be encouraging each other with. So here's your practice for the week. Um, What I want you to engage in life-on-life application is I want you to find any time you see someone moving toward the love and actions of the Father this week, I want you to call it out. Anytime you see someone being gracious, being kind, being patient, showing acts of love, anytime you see someone in your world reflecting the image of Christ and the goodness of God, I want you to acknowledge it. I want you to tell them that you see it. And I want you to encourage them on towards love and good deeds. Again, my goal in these uh, these rhythms is I don't want to tell you just what not to do, right? I don't want to tell you um, just don't be a boaster, don't be a bragger. Um, I want to start helping you and I rewire our humanity so that we... Um, without thinking, act like the Father, think like the Father, and live like the Father. So uh, that is all I'm going to leave you with this week. Be an encouragement to one another. Give each other courage. And in doing so, um, you will be honoring God, glorifying His name, and uh, you will not have to worry about boasting about your own actions or your own needs. God bless you, church. Have a great week.